The Dzukia National Park has so many beautiful sights that to miss it would be unforgivable. We invite you to the National Park at all times of the year. Iman Taslas Dinis, the former director of Dzukia National Park, the present Minister of Environmental Protection. Valleys of Hornbeam in spring. The cottages, barns, and bathhouses of Kapinishkes village. The light of the sky and the rivers reflects the blossoms of the slender windflower. Nowhere are there so many of these festive flowers as here in Kapinishkes village. Jonas Virnalis Stork has built a nest at the top of the black alder tree. Marshes and forests are all around. Grass snakes are a common sight in Zukia village of Shinine, and no one here fears them. Zukia National Park has a wealth of rivers, rivulets, brooks, and streams. A variety of flora and fauna live along their banks. Entomologists have found many rare varieties of butterflies and moths in the park, which are seen nowhere else in Lithuania. No less than 150 types of birds live in the park's forests. The oak wood of Subartonis. The black stork can be found here in the serpentine branched fir, a rare form of the common tree. The columbine flowers here and the forest lily. One hundred and twenty-six types of plants and animals from the park are written in Lithuania's Red Book. Mari Sadauskina weeds the garden on her farm in the village of Jemi. The Dzukia National Park is especially interesting because it shows the close ties between man and nature. Here you can meet people who are living the same lifestyle as those who lived hundreds of years ago. You can see this not only here in the museum, but throughout the entire national park. Julius Kvaretseus from the village of Yonione is a professional fisherman. The strong and swift canoe only listens to its master's oar. The sight is reminiscent of the ancient art of fishing. The combed and spun flax returns the patterns of autumn and colors of summer to Stasi Witkowskine's cottage in Zakavole village. The brightly colored fabrics do not fade in the sun. They are long-lasting, like the fir branch fence near Lauya Lake. On the other side of Lauya Lake is Valdis Witkowska's juniper. There are weaving schools in Merkine and Marcinkonis because many weavers still live in these villages. Stasi Witkowskine teaches young weavers how to display ancient talents. No doubt, one must sit at the loom to know what the weaver feels.
Arvidas Morkunas from Marcinconis has no doubt read the journal of famed master and traveler Rockwell Kent. He writes, What a joy it is to create a new thing with one's own hands, from beginning to end. Malvina Chesnulienes Gardens still grace Manchagire village near the rapid Ula River, although she no longer creates them. They are preserved at the cottage of Thomas Mishkinis, who is one of the most talented carpenters in the region. Malvina Chesnulienes Gardens are tied with the finest yellow rye straw. They are a miracle in this land of storytellers, master workers, carpenters, and mushroom pickers. Zervinos village's forest ranger, Algis Svernalis, is ready to head to a far wood to bring a hollow beehive for the wild bees. He passes old beehives where the bees no longer stay. In the whole national park, there are only two live beehives remaining, where one can still smell the scent of wild honey. Jozas Mishkinis of Marcinkonis shows how to climb to the wild beehive. Ropes, hooks, and a small bench make up the special equipment necessary to climb high to the beehive. There are 80 natural monuments in the park, the majority of which are these ancient wild beehives. In this colorful land of fields and hills near Merkina, Lima Savishchevienes tied bouquets represent the creativity of nature. Little Giedris will always remember how his mother wove wildflowers. Ceramist Patras Pretkelis, workshop in Zakavole. It was here that the forgotten black ceramic was rediscovered. The younger generation has revived this ancient local craft. Let us remember Friedrich Schelling's thought. There is no part of nature that is not alive. Even the rocks are alive. The clay in this land is alive and it listens to the creator's individuality. In the village of Maximonis, Jugas Petraitis prepares his own and his mother's works for an exhibit. The cottage of ceramist Elvira Petraitine is her home, workshop and museum. It was here that the family's creative life began. Sculptor Solus Indrasius is a universal artist. Wood, clay and copper obey him. They exhibit their works in their own garden, as well as in exhibit halls in France.
Ceramis Ruta Indrashutes, clay horses, goats, and sheep go for a walk along Balajeris Lake. As many as 12 villages in the park are ethnographic preserves. In the ethnographic village of Zervinos, women returning from the day's work gather for May services. <laughs> Organist, painter, and statue sculptor Jonas Grigorovichus and his wife Kleofa have been living in Merkina for 50 years. Each year in August, the people of Merkina celebrate the church festival of St. Rokas. The young people of Merkina dance for their neighbors and guests and have danced Lithuanian national dances abroad as well. The unique Margionis Barn Theater is the only one of its type in Lithuania. It was built by the foresters and workers of the national park and now artists and folk ensembles from Margionis and other parts of the region perform here. The participants in the Baltica festival were not the first foreigners to visit Margionis. The International Folklore Festival Baltica has arrived at the Zukia National Park. Ethnographer Onute Drobeliana's dream has come true, and the museum opens its doors to the first guests. The Marcinconis weavers' fabrics and textiles are on display at the festival.
the colorful Baltica festival visits the villages. The closing ceremony of the Baltica festival. A concert is held near the Kastinis Lake, where guests from five foreign countries participated, as well as the Dzukia National Park Ethnographic Ensemble, and ensembles from the villages of Zhirai, Zervinos, Kuvoce, Margionis, and Martinkonis. We hope to see you again soon. Algimantas Czarnauskas greets Lithuanian and foreign tourists at the Dzukia National Park Information Center in Merkine. Here visitors can learn about the park's most interesting natural and ethnocultural sites. The center has information about all of the Dzukia region as well. The swift, clear and cool rivers throughout the park attract tourists. The Ula River from Zervine to Pole to the Merkis and to the Namunas River is the most beautiful spot for water sports. These are the elements that river rafters look for. Daily labor in the forest near the Gruda and Merkis rivers. This is the life of Tsukia. Ishkava Lake is in the southwestern part of the Tsukia National Park. There are a total of 46 lakes of various sizes in the park. Kuchus River, which flows from Lishkava Lake to the Namanas River, near the town of Lishkava. The mythological stone with the imprint of an ox's hoof is only one of the many sites which daily attracts tourists from Druskininka by ferry boat. You can make arrangements with the Nemonitis Aviation Club's president, Gintaras Shurkius, to get a bird's eye view of Dzukia. It is easy to locate the park in southern Lithuania, which is intersected by the international roads leading to Berlin and Gardenas. A chapel on the Merkina Hill of Crosses, among the green pines near the Nemonas River, is a monument to the partisans who fought against Soviet occupation. The Dzukia National Park covers 55,000 hectares. 80% of the territory is forested, primarily with pine trees. The legendary Gilsha Lake is known from the works of Lithuanian literary classic Vincas Creve. 
The paths he walked in his youth are written about in stories and legends of the Dainava region. Autumn comes to the 79 villages in the National Park. There are 4,000 residents in these villages, where to each resident there are 25 hectares of forest. Near Linajdis, one can find the small Aklalis Lake, which is interesting to botanists for its varied plant life. The red-capped Belitis is one of 200 varieties of edible mushrooms found in the park. Near Manchagiris village, the clear canyon brook Ishruginis flows to the Ula River. The Chapkali Preserve borders the Dzukia National Park and covers 10,000 hectares. It is the largest upland marsh in Lithuania, where wild cranberries and rare flora and birds are protected. An ancient wood. Everything is as nature created. Our aim is to preserve the woods and to show man's honorable relations with the trees, fields, and water. Lithuanian nationalist Jonas Basanavichus invites us. Climb to the top of the castle mounds. From here you can see the true Lithuania.